ông cứ cho ông đừng đặt bậc cao to cái chấm đại ca mấy tệ chi sẽ mà cả hai đồng đòi về thì cả chuyên từ đầm nào thay thì nhá đầm bay đầm to cả đạo bằng hai nhảy cả xa mấy chục một ông cũng đẹp sùng từ Thank you, Mr. President. I'm moving on to the last extract from Ben Kiernan's book, How Pol Pot Came to Power. This appears on English, ERN 00487504. And Khmer 0010487. The heading to the section is Premonition. Mr. Kiernan states as follows in the book. On the 18th of March 1974, the fourth anniversary of Sihanouk's deposition. A combined force of CPK Northern and Southwestern Zone troops, led by Pok and Mok, overran the former royal capital of Udong, 24 miles north of Phnom Penh, on the border of the two zones. A few months later, Donald Kirk, that is a reference to Donald Kirk, a journalist, who has written a book called Wider War, published in New York in 1971, and also a document entitled The Khmer Rouge, Revolutionaries or Terrorists, written in 1974. A few months later, Donald Kirk investigated the aftermath of this CPK victory, which had serious implications for royalism as well as for the Khmer Republic. Quote, there was manifestly a conscious effort on the part of the Khmer Rouge, not only to overrun government outposts, but to destroy the last vestiges of a civilization that appeared totally decadent and irrelevant. Thus, the Khmer Rouge, after conquering Udong, led the populace of 20,000 persons into the nearby jungle, killed all school teachers and government officials, and deliberately razed the town, setting buildings on fire or tearing them down. That's footnote 377, Donald Kirk. Next, Mr. Kiernan is going to refer to, in footnote 328, 78, sorry, 378, he's going to refer to his interview with a man called Tim, T-I-M. And that was Ben Kiernan's interview with Tim in Udong on the 18th of September 1980. A peasant from the village of Vieng Kath, that's Tim, brackets Old Palace, close bracket, outside the town, who had been aware of local CPK activities since 1967 and sympathised with their anti-royalist views, took part in the evacuation. In 1980, he recalled, quote, 
40,000 people were sent in all directions. The Khmer Rouge burnt houses everywhere. We had to go to go west into Region 31, Kompong Chnang, and were sent on and on. Uniformed Lon Nol soldiers were executed along the way. People were split up into groups of 50, 200, or 300, and escorted by groups of Khmer Rouge. Of those sent on to Region 31 and further to Pasat and Batambong in some cases, only one in five survived to return five years later. Mr. Kiernan continues. A CPK sub-district cadre in the area, and that's a reference to Numuk or Numao, who gave evidence last week. A CPK sub-district cadre in the area affirms that the orders to evacuate the town population came directly from Mok. The rationale, he says, was to get them to grow rice in the rear base areas, malaria-infested areas where there were food shortages. Mr. Kiernan then states, Udon was an omen on a small scale for the population of Phnom Penh. He then, referencing again Numuk, says that Chu Chet was in Kampot when Udong was taken, and then still referencing Numuk, he says as follows, the same cadre, and that is Numuk. The same cadre also reports a CPK company commander telling him in 1974 that Hu Yun opposed evacuation of the capital. But Yun and Chet had been outmaneuvered, at least in the south. West. Mok and Kusong Pong, the cadre says, were already in favour of evacuating Phnom Penh, and that is footnote 382 referring to Ben Kiernan's interview with Numuk. He, Kiernan, continues. The Deputy Secretary of Region 37 at the time, and I interject that is an interview between Steve Hedder and this man that took place on the 11th to 12th of March 1980. So, the Deputy CPK Secretary of Region 37 at the time later told an interviewer, quote, If we had captured Phnom Penh in 1974, there would also have been an evacuation. This had been a long-standing plan. The slogan was dry up the people from the enemy. Next, Mr. President, can I move to document number E3-167? The next 
number of documents deal with the movements of Kusampong and Ying Seri as part of the Grong Phong official tour to China, Vietnam, Europe and Africa. So, firstly, E3-167, English ERN 00280571. Khmer 00596117 and French 00001017 and this is a broadcast by the Information Bureau of the United National Front of Kampuchea and it's published by the Nouvelle du Cambodge Kampuchea Information Agency. And that first page identifies the document. This document is dealing with a, the trip by Q Sampong and Ian Seri to North Korea. And to give some details, I moved to English page 00280. Five eight four. Khmer page zero zero five nine six one three eight. And I hope French S zero 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 one two zero stroke two one. And there's part of the report which is entitled. Speech given by Deputy Prime Minister Kiu Sampon. And the text reads, at the reception hosted on the 5th of April in the assembly room at Mansudang by the Central People's Committee and the Administrative Council of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. And it talks about Mr. Q. Songhong giving the following speech. And this is within two weeks or so of the incident at Udong. And the relevant extract is at English 00280580586 and Khmer 00596141. So this is a direct quote from the Q Song Pong On the contrary, the Cambodian People's National Liberation Armed Forces attacked the enemy forcefully and are now solidly implanted at the very gates of Phnom Penh. And Phnom Penh itself, the last hideout of the traitors, has become a burning battlefield under the increased pressure of our people's national liberated armed forces. On the 18th of March, our people's national liberation armed forces liberated another city. Udong, by annihilating all the puppet soldiers there, along with their reinforcements. In other words, over 5,000 enemies were eliminated. And next, can I please deal with the start of this official trip? So North Korea was one of the countries visited on this trip by Q. Songpong and Ying Seri. But to take us back to late March 1974, I moved to document number E3 slash 1238. English ERN 00278. 739 
And this document is a funk publication, again published in Nouvelle du Cambodge, and it is entitled Congratulations from Chief of State Sandat Norodom Sihanouk to Mr. Q. Sampong. And it is dated on the 1st of April 1974. It references Sihanouk um, congratulating Q. Sampong the chief of the Funk and Grunk delegation on his official friendly visit in Vietnam. And then there's a partial text of the message which was delivered by Sihanouk on the 27th of March. And I quote, I am extremely happy to learn that you have arrived in good health in the glorious and fraternal Democratic Republic of Vietnam and to deliver to you and to their Excellencies Ian Siri, Q Tirit, and my heartfelt wishes for a complete success in your patriotic mission. Your current and future visits to our friends, Vietnam, China, and Korea, have and will have historic importance and positive consequences. Then, moving still to give some detail to Vietnam, we move to English 00, still within the same document. English 00278740, Khmer 00702019, and French 00000022. And this part of the document is headed Talks between the Funk and Grunk Delegation, the Vietnamese Fatherland Front, and the government. And it confirms that talks were held on the 29th and 30th March in the presidential palace of the Vietnamese government between Funk and Grump delegation, the Vietnamese Fatherland Front and the DRVN government and that the Cambodian representatives were Q Song Pong and Next, I move to document number E3-1242. The front of that document, still dated the 1st of April 1974, shows that there was a farewell farewell reception hosted by the Funk and Grunk delegation in Hanoi in Vietnam. And that uh, the extract on the front of that page so shows that there was a big farewell reception in Hanoi on the 31st of March 1974 at the end of the official French visit to the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. Still within the same document, English ERN 00322964, Khmer 00607959, French 00000049-50. And this shows under a heading signing of the Joint Kampuchea Vietnam Declaration that there was a signing ceremony of a joint declaration by the Funk and Grunk delegation uh, and the Vietnamese on the 1st of April 1974 and the, the signatory for the Cambodian delegation was The next document is E3-113. This is a funk public publication dated the 2nd of April 1974, again published in Nouvelle du Cambodge. It shows that English ERN 00280540, Khmer S00704558,
and French 000 stroke 7 that in an entry dated the 2nd of April 1974, Peking warmly and solemnly welcomes the Funk and Grung delegation. And that shows that again, um, under the leadership of Hu Songpong, the delegation arrived in Peking on the 1st of April by special flight from Hanoi, and that leaders of the Chinese Communist Party and the government of the People's Republic of China, uh, including Zhou Enlai, came to the airport to greet the delegation. Within the same document, English 00280542, Khmer 00704560361, and French 00000068. It shows in an entry dated the 2nd of April that on the 1st of April there was a grand banquet in Peking in honour of the Funk and Grunk delegation. The entry states, yesterday evening Mr Zhou Enlai, the Prime Minister of the Council of Foreign Affairs, offered a grand banquet in honour of the Funk and Grunk delegation led by Deputy Prime Minister Kim Song Pong and Special Advisor Ian Sari. The next page, English 00280543, Zero four that entry shows that on the 1st of April, Mr. Zhou Enlai, Prime Minister of the Council of Foreign Affairs of the People's Republic of China, gave a speech to the banquet in honour of the Funk and Grunk delegation. So this is the speech by Zhou Enlai at the banquet on the 1st of April 1970. And I'll move to an extract of that speech on English ERN 00280544. Command S zero seven zero four five six three stroke six four and French zero 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 seven zero. So Joe in Light stated the People's National Liberation Armed Forces of Cambodia gained strength in the ravages of war. Closely tied to the masses, they fought with heroism, decimating large, strong enemy armies and freeing over 90% of the national territory inhabited by over 80% of the population of the country firmly guaranteeing themselves control over the war. Since the beginning of the current drying season, they have started offences on different battlefields, launched attacks against enemies lurking in Phnom Penh or in other points of support, and achieved triumphant victories. Still within the same document, now moving on to a meeting between Mao Zedong, Kyu Sampong, and Ying Suri. The ERN in English, 0028056. In Khmer, S0070456773. In French, Zero 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 seven three, and the entry confirms that President Mao Zedong met with the Fung and Grung delegation that was led by Kyu Song Pong and Ying Sari, and that Zhao Enlai was also present on that occasion. 
Next, I move to document E3-1254. The front page of that document, um, English ERN 0020547, Khmer S00. Six three three seven four zero and French zero 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 Next, I move to document number E3-1255. At English ERN 00280564, Khmer 00593609, and French 00001. We have confirmation. Yes, Mr. President, uh, I will do that. The ERN in Khmer for this document is 00 Again, it is a funk publication published in Nouvelle du Cambodge. And on this page, we have confirmation that discussions uh, were held between the Funk and Grunk delegation and the delegation of the government of the People's Democratic Republic of Korea on the 7th of April 1974 in Pyongyang. And President and President on the Cambodian side, again, I move on to document number E3-115. Well, no, forgive me. I'm going to cover one other document. I'm moving back to E3-167. This was a document that we've already covered in terms of words spoken by Q. Sang Hong on the 5th of April whilst in North Korea. But to set the chronology correctly, I'm on E3-167. English ERN 00280590, Khmer 00596147 through 48, and French 00001227. And Andre portion entitled The Funk and Grunk Delegation Leaves Pyongyang. We have confirmation that the Funk and Grunk Delegation headed by Q. Songpong and Ng Sari left Pyongyang in North Korea on the 8th of April 1974 to travel to Beijing. And on English page 00280591 within the same document, Khmer 00059614 and French 00001283 
The delegation arrived in Beijing on the 8th of April 1974. Next, E3 slash 115. English ERN 0 0 5 9 4 Khmer 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 the Funk and Glunk delegation en route to Europe and Africa. And the entry states of the Funk and Glunk delegation under the leadership of Q Song Pong and E. Sari left Peking on the 19th of April 1974 by special flight to visit European African the next page in English, which is 00280595, Khmer 00597967, and French 00000149, has an entry entitled The Funk and Grunk Delegation Arrives in Tirana. Tirana being in Albania, and then there's confirmation that the Funk and Grunk delegation arrived on the 20th of April 1974 in Tirana for an official and friendly visit on the invitation of the Council of Ministers of the People's Republic of Albania. And again, the Cambodian delegation or the Funk and Grunk delegation was under the leadership of Q Sampon, assisted by Ying Sari as special advisor. Next, can I move please to document number E3 3312. This is a United States Department of State document on page number English 00412748, Khmer 0074084848-9, and French 00763789-9. There is an entry that shows that the next stop was Albania, which I've just covered, and then we have the words, and I quote, then to Belgrade, In next document, E3 3315, English RN 0041275. Khmer 0079-0011 and French 0080-2337. We have confirmation again in the United States Department of State document uh, telegram. Uh, there is these words. During a call by the ambassador at the foreign ministry, and this is in uh, Bucharest, on other matters, Deputy Foreign Minister Nicolae Genea made several comments on the visit to Romania of the Cambodian Grunk leader, Next, document number E3-3318. This is a U.S. Bye -bye. Department Mui. of State telegram, English ERN 00412773, Khmer 00790015, and French 00802340. And this has reference to, and I quote, the French ambassador to Algiers, 
Obviously, the capital of Algeria reported on Hugh Sompong's visit. That's an item on that page. And then following on the next page, at item 5, it's reported that following the visit to uh, Nuuk Chot, the capital of Mauritania in Africa, Kyu Sompon would go to Yaounde, the capital of Cameroon, and then hoped to visit Cairo, the capital, obviously, of Egypt. Next, please, document number E3-2939. This is on English page 0037749. Khmer 0073834041 and French 0066874. This is a Department of State telegram from the American consulate in Hong Kong to Washington. The communique is headed to Sompong's visit to the People's Republic of China, and it states, as the joint communique noted, the visit of Q Sompong to the People's Republic of China was crowned by mutual success. And on the next page, we have these words. The joint communique of the 27th of May, issued at the conclusion of the Q Sompon visit to the People's Republic of China, noted both sides full satisfaction. They're moving away, Mr. President, now from this official tour by Q Sompon and Dean Siri to some more factual matters leading up to the evacuation stroke liberation of Phnom Penh. And I start for these purposes at E3-1815, again returning to Ben Kiernan's book, How Pol Pot Came to Power. English ERN 00487532, Khmer ERN 00104885, no French, as I explained earlier. The extract reads as follows. In June 1974, according to Pol Pot, the CPK Central Committee met and decided to launch the decisive offensive to liberate Phnom Penh and the whole country. The campaign would begin on the 1st of January 1975. This is in the epilogue section to Ben Kiernan's book. That reference to Pol Pot's speech is a reference to a speech which Pol Pot gave on the 27th of September 1977, which is footnote one in the epilogue. Next, please, document number E3-11. This is an extract from a revolutionary flag in September 1977. The English ERN is 0048624. Khmer is 0006363. I'm being told we want the ERNs in English again. The English ERN is. Zero zero four eight six two four seven in Khmer zero 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 six three one six two stroke three in French zero zero four nine two eight three six. So this is an extract from the revolutionary flag of September 1977. 
At the beginning, we concentrated on attacking the enemy's weak positions in the countryside with combined military attacks by regular and guerrilla units, with mass demonstrations to strike the enemy and take power in the villages and communes. In this way, we are liberated and expanded in the countryside every single day and isolated the enemy, encircling them a few large population centers at the same time that we tied down enemy forces in scattered positions where the communications and supplies became more and more difficult for them. It was during this situation when our party's central committee in the course of its June 1974 conference resolved to mount the decisive offensive to liberate Phnom Penh and the entire country and two paragraphs below carrying out the decision of the party central committee during the rainy season of the year 1974 we actively prepared our forces politically ideologically and organizationally and in terms of the combat line on the battlefield our entire revolutionary army audaciously fulfilled the party's mission of making the decisive attack. Next I move to document number E3-89. This is a transcript of an interview between Ying Siri and Stephen Heder on the 17th of December, 1996. Ying Siri said, The matter of the evacuation from Phnom Penh had been previously decided. That's according to what I was told. Header. February 1975? No, April, May, but in early April or late March 1975. They brought up the possibilities of what to do when Phnom Penh was won. I raised this matter with Pol Pot in 1974, asking what preparations had been made for when we won Phnom Penh. We discussed the population at that time. On that, pardon me, where did you meet him? I met him near Phnom Penh. I had returned from Beijing. I came back in 73 and met the prince in Hanoi. I went to Beijing and came back in 74. When you led the economic delegation to Vietnam and went to Beijing, yes, I returned. This is easy. I returned. And then we discussed what we should do when we won and what preparations should be made. This was the view of His Excellency Zhou Enlai. He had asked me what plans we had for after we won. 
I was in a difficult spot. I did not dare respond at all at the time. I said that I did not yet have a clear knowledge and he would have to wait until I could ask inside Cambodia. When I did ask inside the country, I did not dare ask about army matters, but I did ask what solution there would be to the problem of the people, what solution there would be to the problem of the three million people in Phnom Penh. Pol Pot replied to me that they already had all the experience they needed and that I should not concern myself with this and should instead concern myself with my duties abroad. I then said that I had been specifically asked by the Chinese leadership about this problem. He said that it was a very easy matter to resolve and that our Chinese comrades had nothing to worry about because we Khmer had clear cut notions in this regard after having been able to solve the problem in Stung Treng and Krache provinces. So, the solution to the problem was to evacuate. That was the only way to solve the problem. I responded by asking whether this meant a total evacuation or what and he said to wait and see what the concrete situation would be at the time. Nevertheless, the term evacuation was already being used in 1974. I move next to document number E3-687. This is an article which appeared in the New York Times on the 9th of July 1982. And the document is headed Three Unlikely Cambodian Allies. Uh, Map War on Vietnam. Vietnam. And the three people being referred to in the article no are Prince Norodom Sihanouk, his former Prime Minister Son San, and Q Sampong, who the author describes as the long-time communist who was a theoretician for Pol Pot's communist regime and helped develop the policy under which millions of Cambodians were expelled from Phnom Penh. On page number English 00122280, Khmer 0065 And French 006 stroke five zero. Bram, the journalist for this article, states as follows. His name's Colin Campbell. Colin Campbell is referencing Young the Love. Q Sampong. 
And there's a part of the article, a collective decision. Quote, and he acknowledged that millions of Cambodians had been sent out of Phnom Penh and into the countryside as a result of a collective decision. Had he joined the decision? Question mark. Mr. Q. Sompon chuckled dryly and replied in French, yes, evidently. I move next to document number E3-26. This is an interview that Nguyen Chia gave a Japanese journalist on the 7th of October 2006. On English page 00329511, Khmer 00000899, and French 00636871. The journalist asked this question of Nguyen Chia. So why did Pol Pot have sufficient capability to control the entire movement? On that, it was not him by himself. Everyone worked together. He made his contribution, we made ours. But the important thing was that the people supported us. During the democratic Kampuchea era, did Pol Pot have a monopoly over power or Munchia? No, the collective, democracy concentration, brackets, democratic centralism, close bracket. On English page 00329512, Khmer 000099. And French 00636873. There is a question from the journalist. Who decided to evacuate the people from the cities? The party centre, journalist. Who had the original idea? At that time, individuals each helped a little to originate ideas. It was combining this with that. Next move to document number D248-5.1.1. This is a 10th of July 1974 telegram from the US Embassy in Phnom Penh entitled Recent Movement of Khmer Refugees to Niep Luong. English ERN 00377 into 46. Khmer 00658192 into 93. And French 
At item 2 in the telegram, there is the following quote. Over a year ago, Khmer insurgent forces overran parts of Route 1 between Nia Luong and Phnom Penh and moved most of the Khmer living there off to the swampy area between the Mekong and Basak River just to the south. The Khmer from Route 1 underwent political indoctrination and were forced to farm and fish to support the Khmer insurgent forces. Life around Prasat Tayo was difficult, and many of the returned, sorry, I repeat, and many of the recently returned refugees complained bitterly about the economic deprivation and political oppression. During the last month, the situation became so bad that most people there had nothing to eat besides corn. Some tried to escape on their own, and during the last several months, an estimated 150 families made it safely to Niak Luang. Others were not so lucky and were either captured or killed by the Khmer insurgents. Next, document number E3-3329. This is a U.S. Department of State document, and the ERNs are as follows, English 0041287777. Khmer 00632768 and French 00599748. This is a telegram from the American Embassy in Vientiane in Laos to Washington. Number one. The Vientiane daily newspaper, Jap Lao, Lao Nation on August the 9th, 1974, printed an article titled, quote, Misery in the Zone, controlled by the Khmer Rouge, told by a Cambodian monk, close quote. The following is an English translation of the article, number two. In the course of a visit to the Wat Sene Muang in the province of Sitandon, your reporter was able to interview a Khmer monk, the venerable Pra chief of Wat Tha Pue, who sought refuge in Sitandon before the start of the Buddhist Lent. The monk exposed the very difficult conditions of life existing in the areas controlled by the Khmer Rouge. At number five, no. speaking of the administration in the Red Zone, Pra Kyol Ap stated that the population led a very difficult life. They were victims of requisitions and had to permanently submit to propaganda sessions and every sort of trouble. As to the military problem, continued the Venerable, it came uniquely from Mr. Q. Sampon's order which forbade the population in the zone bordering land from respecting Prince Sihanouk. Those who did not obey this order are executed miserably, indicated the same monk who had reported the case of General Sompon executed in 1973 during a reception.
ដោយបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបានបាន